Eddie Chavez. Ruben Nava. And Jesse Romero. Jesus 911. Good morning, everybody. Jesus 911 on Virgin Most Powerful Radio. Two man car. My partner Jesse Romero and I were both blue collar, retired LA County deputy sheriffs who love Jesus, love his church, and love his mother. And we want to proclaim it from the rooftops. Good morning, Jesse. Reporting for duty, sir. And we can't forget our partner, Eddie Chavez, even though he's from the California Highway Patrol, we'll forgive him. (laughs) Yeah, but, uh, you know, his saving grace is he worked a lot of years with a task force. uh, No, yeah, you know, Eddie worked all the cool jobs. Yes, he did. Yeah. Okay, so, hey, Jess, we have, um, we're going to be talking about something that. um, It's not, Ruben, it's a problem that's not going away. No, unfortunately, it isn't. It's spreading. uh, This is the problem. Uh, We're talking about marijuana, and it's all, it's. More and more, you know, uh, cities and, and counties and, and states are, are endorsing this. And it's the, you just can follow the money. It's big, big dollars behind it. There and you go. They're, they're not they're, they're not thinking rationally because medically speaking, it's not the the, the, the results aren't there. So uh, it's it's a bunch of hogwash that's being fed to us and to our kids. And God, God help us, because uh, there's a lot of problems. I mean, you look around just in L.A., the homelessness prop population guys are just out there stoned out of their mind defecating and, and urinating in the streets and uh, i i gets disgust me san francisco the same thing and they, they pride themselves oh we just got rid of straws uh the airport of san francisco just banned water bottles oh because of the ecology you know the, the environment and stuff like that but what are you, you still letting the guy you know defecate in the street and giving him needles there's needles everywhere but We'll talk about how this this marijuana could be a a drug that leads to a, a a gateway drug that leads to these other hard drugs. And I would venture to say, having more narcotics, just that everyone starts with marijuana. I, I guarantee you, man. I, they, I mean, was, that's what all the dopers have told me, Ruben, oh, yeah. all my life. All yeah, my so. uncles, everybody, my family members, crooks that I've dealt with. I mean, I, I've lived in barrios all my life, except for the last four years. I moved to God's <laughs> country out here. <laughs> But all my life, I've lived in the ghettos, bro, and and uh, every single drug addict in my family, you know, acquaintances, they said I started with marijuana. It's BS that it's not a gateway drug. That's right. That's right. And and we'll also talk about how you can't, you know, is is it addicting? Maybe not in our day, back in high school when the the THC levels were so low. But you 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 got to be kidding to see how powerful the the dope is now because of the different strains that they're making uh, you know under the, all the perfect conditions the lighting the hydroponics and all that so Ruben, not- and here's the issue that i have as a catholic why i don't trust the medical community because you can write you can find puff pieces on the internet where they're trying to extol the greatness of marijuana doctors you know mm-hmm. you know phds and stuff but my point is this is that without a doubt the scientific and the medical community They've been hijacked and they've been politicized by the left. How, how do we know that? Here, I'll give you a couple of examples. You got people like a, a congresswoman from New York saying that the world's going to end in 12 years. And you got other candidates that are running for the Democrat Party that are saying that on the platform. Yeah. The planet is going to end in 12 years if we don't implement the new Green Deal. You got this, this whole nutty, uh, you know, the, the whole climate change movement, which, again, it's unsettled science. You got the whole... Uh, homosexuals are born that way. There's no medical evidence. Another propaganda piece. I've actually seen bumper stickers that say abortion is health care. That's another propaganda piece. Mm-hmm. And, the, and how long have they been teaching our kids that, uh, you know, in, in, so that we come from monkeys, polywogs, theory of Darwinian evolution? Here's the point that I'm making. I don't trust, by and large, the medical, the scientific community, unless it's hard science. When they start, you know, speculating or conjecture about, yeah, well, marijuana may have these properties. I just don't believe it because, like you said, follow the money. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It takes years just to get uh, pharmaceuticals approved from the FDA and, you know, a lot of studies. And and, and this marijuana is being given to to, to people saying it's medical marijuana. Doctors are prescribing it. How do they know that how much... What what the proper dosage is? There's no way they could, you know. <laughs> oh well, 
Hey, let's, self-prescribing let's... and self-medicating. Ruben, before we jump onto this topic of marijuana, yeah. I just want to say that there was a voice out there, Venerable Fulton Sheen, he said back in the 70s, uh, in fact, you can get the CD from, from uh, here from Virgin Most Powerful. It's, it's a, it's a three-CD set. It's called A Voice from Calvary by Venerable Fulton Sheen. On the second CD, right when he starts it, he says this. He says, a demon Bacchus, B-A-C-H-U-S, who we reject in Jesus' name, go to the foot of the cross. Uh, Fulton Sheen says he's the demon of marijuana, and he was sent to us in the 1970s from hell. I just quoted Fulton Sheen on that CD. Mm. So uh, either Fulton Sheen is telling us the truth or he's the liar. I believe he's telling us the truth. I do too. And, and so we've been warned that there's a, a diabolical spirit attached to this entire movement of medical and recreational marijuana. But, Ruben, let's answer some questions that people have sent us throughout the years, email and, and, and chat room questions on the topic of marijuana. We have a, a bunch of them right in front of us if you want to just uh, take one. Yeah, let me, let me take this first one, Jess. Um, it's, um, it says, a kid asked me why smoking pot is wrong and where's that in the Bible. And uh, anyway, here's the this, this short answer it's because in a nutshell it alters your mind alters your judgment and alters your ability to think clearly and soberly bingo mm -hmm. i mean hey, you, you can't make it more basic than that yeah i mean remember that you, that uh commercial years ago ruben probably when we were kids uh there was uh, eggs that were frying and they would say your mind is a terrible thing to waste yes <laughs> yeah exactly uh kind of a funny commercial but the point the point is is that what you just said narcotics marijuana alters your mind and you're going to just start start saying things that are stupid and doing things that are stupid that's right here's another one <clears throat> can you show me in the, in the bible that smoking marijuana is more morally wrong and this one's good for all, all of us bible junkies okay now there's no verse in the bible that specifically says smoking marijuana is wrong however as catholic christians we're called to have the pure sober renewed mind of jesus christ where does it say that Several verses, Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and 2, it tells us, be transformed by the renewal of your mind so that you may discern what is the will of God. Notice, you don't know what the will of God is unless you're sober. The Bible says unless your mind is renewed. Here's another one, 1 Corinthians 2, 16. For who has known the mind of the Lord so as to counsel him? But we have the mind of Christ. Notice, the Bible says we have the mind of Christ. It's impossible to think like Christ or think like a Christian if you're intoxicated. Here's another one. 2 Corinthians 10, 5. And every pretension raising itself against the knowledge of God and take every thought captive and obedient to Jesus Christ. Okay? So when you read the, uh, the three Bible verses that I just shared with you and you see that it's clear that the Lord wants us to have transformed and renewed minds, here's my question. My question is, how can you have the pure holy mind of Jesus Christ if you're under the influence of marijuana, impossible. You can't. Mm, that's right. Okay, Jess. Um, let's see. There's another question that comes to us is that um, where in the Bible does it condemn recreational use of, of drugs for the purpose of altering the mind? And uh, there's quite a few Bible verses that, that go into that. You go ahead. Galatians 5, 19 to 20. Now the works of the flesh are obvious, immorality, impurity, licentiousness, idolatry, sorcery, hatreds, rivalry, jealousy, outbursts of fury, acts of selfishness, dissensions, factions, occasions of envy, drinking, bouts, orgies, and the like. I warn you, as I warned you before, that those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. Uh, Revelation 9.21, nor did, did they repent of their murders, their magic potions, their unchastity or their robberies. Magic potions were drugs in the ancient world. Okay, that's... Just the PS. Yeah, and that... Uh, I mean, that does, correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, I believe the word is pharmakia. It's, it's that Greek word, right? To, for correct. that. And so that... Uh, let's see. Yeah, it, let's, it, yeah, Ruben, every usage of that word in the Bible that you just quoted there, and there's other passages, Revelation 18.23, Revelation 22.14 and 15, the word sorcery or magic is used interchangeably. Hmm. It's the same Greek word. It's pharmakeia. And the word pharmakeia, uh, this signifies the use of medicines or drugs or spells or poisoning and sorcery. In sorcery, the use of drugs back in the Old and New Testament, whether simple or potent, was generally accompanied by incantations and appeals to occult demonic spirits. 
And so if you do a word search, you can clearly see, you can clearly see the direct connection in the Bible by the study of this word sorcery because it was directly connected with the use of drugs and potions and medicines to alter the mind of the user in order to engage in occult demonic practices. Every pagan religion has had a drug right ingrained somewhere in its ritualistic practice. And marijuana specifically is the one that's preferred because it produces feelings of transcendence that may make users think they are little gods or that they possess insight denied to non-users. And let's not forget that if the, if the devil says that, uh, I mean, the Bible says that the devil disguises himself as an angel of light, okay? Mm-hmm. And so this, uh, the, this, this whole use of, of drugs, pharmakeia, what does it do? It creates a passive and a spiritually open state of consciousness that leads to demonic influence, such as infestation, obsession, oppression, and possession. And I got that last part uh, from uh, Father Vince Lampert, who's the uh, exorcist for the Diocese of Indianapolis, Indiana. Powerful. That's good, Jess. Um, does the Bible call us to live a life of sobriety? I would say that it does, Jess. Um, it says the Bible, um, he, it mentions sober at least six times in the New Testament. Okay, so, well, that was a quick uh, first segment. We're going to come back to this. Uh, when we come back, we'll be talking about some of these things on, on marijuana, so you don't want to miss it. A lot of uh, your family members may be uh, involved in this, your children. So you want to hear this stuff. We'll be right back. This is Barbara Nicolosi, and we're having a women's conference here at the Sacred Heart Chapel in Covina on September 7th, 2019. This is going to be a great, great day for you to come and meet a bunch of new friends, wonderful Catholic women who want to deepen their Catholic faith and their understanding of themselves as women. You know, this era right now that we're in, so much confusion. What is it to be a man? What is it to be a woman? You know, the Catholic Church has a lot to say about this, and we're going to hear about them. We're going to hear about John Paul II's letter on women that he wrote from Mary Danielle Barber. is going to talk about that. She's going to talk about Mary as a model for all of us. It's a topic that we can never reflect on too much. I'm going to talk about Teresa of Avila and the interior castle and how a mystical marriage is what all of us should be called to, or are called to as Catholics in our prayer lives, and especially as women in the church. Aileen Blakowski is going to talk about motherhood and homeschooling. And then Father, we have, uh, finally we have Father Charles Murray. He's going to be the celebrant of the Eucharist. He's going to be here hearing confessions. It's going to be an amazing day. We're going to have an hour of adoration together, time to pray, time to laugh, and eat, reflect, uh, grow in our passion for our Catholic faith and our identity as Catholic women. You don't want to miss it. You want to come. You want to bring your friends. You want to bring your daughters, your nieces. That's really an affordable day. So go to virginmostpowerfulradio.org and you can register for this conference or call 877-526-2151. The Women's Conference is going to be a great event for the Archdiocese of of Los Angeles area, Southern California Catholics. You don't want to miss it. Buying or selling your home or your business property? This is Terry Barber. Real Estate for Life underwrites the Terry and Jesse Show. And they can connect you to one of 900 pro-life real estate agents around the world. And when they receive their referral fee, they will give 80% of it to a pro-life organization. Wow, that's 80%. Realestateforlife.org, 877-LIFE-US-1. Now, back to Jesus 911. If this call is not an emergency, dial 888-526-2151. Jesus 911, we are back. Two-man car on Soul Patrol. You know, just somebody, one of our de- faithful listeners, dedicated listeners, uh, Hector, sent me something on the break. And, and, and this it just goes right to the this, what we were talking about earlier. This, um, rec- this drug, marijuana, it, um, it's a gateway drug. 
And uh, Mexico, this is straight from the BBC News, uh, August 21st, 2019. It says that Mexico judge approves recreational cocaine use for two, for two users. It's that slippery slope now. Uh, I mean, and this is just for two guys, and I haven't Recreation really gone through the cocaine use. Oh, wow. So what's next, man? Uh, the sky's the limit. The sky's the limit. You know, it's it's that old. And Ruben, that's you know, that's why real, true Catholics. Uh, I, I mean, I don't even hate. I hate to use that word, but there's no other word to use. We have to at this point. We got to be part of the resistance movement. Yeah. And what I mean by that is. Anything crazy coming from the culture or even in anything crazy coming from inside our church, from progressives and modernists, we just at this point got to say, you know what? I respectfully resist. Uh Uh-uh. I don't agree, and I'm not going to agree, and I'm not going to ever agree. Uh, You know, at this point, we just got to just tighten up our belts, as they say in Spanish. Fájate los pantalones. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, right now, you know, all the kids are wearing their pants sagging. Oh, that drives me nuts, man. (laughs) And... You know, it's what, like, uh, to quote Bishop Sheen, he goes, you know, what's what's right is right if nobody's right. What's wrong is wrong if everybody's wrong, right? So right. these guys, just because the the, the, the the majority of these people, the young, youngsters are smoking dope, uh, doesn't make it right. And and it's not going to be moral. Just and, Ruben, you know what they're influenced? I'm going to tell you who they're, they're influenced by the pop culture. And when I say the pop culture, I'm, I'm saying media, music, music yep. the movies. What comes out of Hollywood and New York, but you know both ends of uh, both coast, that that's who controls the narrative in terms of the pop culture. Uh, what's 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 popular in movies and what's popular in music, and uh, these liberals, these progressives, have made drugs and specifically marijuana. They've made it popular, and again, it's not going to stop there, Ruben. It's not going to stop there. So, what were you talking about sobriety? Okay. What does the Bible say about so- sobriety? There's about six Bible verses that talk about sobriety. Acts 26, 25 says, But Paul said, I am not mad, most excellent Festus, but I am speaking the sober truth. Um, yep, you know, when you stop a, a drunk driver, they're, uh, they can't, you can't make heads or tails sometimes with what they're saying because they, they're just all over the place. Or, or someone on dope, they, they're all over the place, and you, they're, they're not thinking rationally, and uh, coherent statements are... are you know, out the window. So Romans 12, three says, for by the grace given to me, I tell everyone among you not to think of himself more highly than one ought to think, but to think soberly each according to the measure of faith that God has appointed. First Thessalonians five, six, therefore let us not sleep as the rest do, but let us stay alert and sober. And that's what we try to do here on virtual most powerful. Jess, we, we try to stay alert and, um, and, and give the sober truth. That's that. exactly. First Peter one three thirteen says, "Therefore, gird up your loins of your mind, live soberly, and and let your hopes completely on the grace to be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ." Do you get the impression that there was a lot of drinking going on over back there? <laughs> First Peter four seven says, "The end of all things is at hand. Therefore, be serious and sober for prayers." Uh, last one. First Peter five. Eight and nine, be sober and vigilant. Your opponent, the devil, is prowling around like a roaring lion, looking for someone to devour. Resist him steadfast in your faith, and you can't resist him if you're not sober. You don't have your mind's not right, you know. So you got to stay sober. You got to be in control of your mind. Yep, uh, it's it's impossible to fight against temptation, the diabolical of your if you're intoxicated. So some people are saying, "All right, Reuben, so you quoted the word sober. What does the word sober mean?" I'm looking it up in the Greek here. The word sober is the Greek word sophron, which means of sound mind, self-controlled, and temperate. There, so the word sober used as a verb in the Greek, it also means, quote, to be free from the influence of intoxicants. The word sober as the verb in Greek means also the cultivation of sound judgment and prudence. And the word sober used as an adverb Sober means the exercise of self-restraints that governs all passions and desires, enabling the believer to be conformed to the mind of Christ. So the word sober is also used in association with the word watchfulness, that last verse you just quoted, 1 Peter 5, 8. So that's used together, sober and watchfulness. Watchfulness is a military word which is used to remind someone to be prepared for battle. In other words, as Peter said in 1 Peter 5, 8, we're called to be prepared for spiritual warfare 
and we can only do so if we are sober. Amen. Does marijuana have a negative spiritual implications? Well, that's uh, th- here we go. The facts are that marijuana destroys the soul's faculties, which are the intellect and the will, which uh, it rendering them weak and impaired. One cannot live a life of holiness and to be in a state of grace while using or smoking marijuana. Drug usage alters the state of mind and can invite demonic activity. You're always, you and Eddie are always talking about this. It promotes the loss of control of the mind as well as denying God's will for us, that is, to be sober-minded. Uh, there's a Dominican priest, Father Juan Jose Gallego, an exorcist from the Archdiocese of Barcelona, Catalonia, Spain, also warned that addictions are a type of possession. And a priest, Jeremy Davis of Westminster, Davies of Westminster, the leading diocese of the Catholic Church of England and Wales, states, the church's writings on exorcism and demonic possession say that a person can be influenced or even possessed by demonic forces when they are hardened in serious sin. And the church specifies that these include people who are involved in heavy drug use, violence, and sexual perversions. There it is. Those things go to hand in hand. Uh, I've always seen that uh, heavy drug use and sexual perversion go hand in hand. When we, when we were going into these dope houses, Jess... That was filled with pornography, fill, uh, you know, it just licentiousness, just, uh, you know, uh, orgies that are going on with these people that are hooked on dope. Uh, okay. We, we, got a, we got another cop for Christ on the line. He wants to make a comment and weigh in. All right. Mr. Clay, Paul, you're on. Go. Okay. We, we lost him. He'll, he'll call right back. We lost him. Okay. That's all right. Ruben, the, what you just said right now, it, it just it just tells me that addictions are like parasites, whether it's alcohol or drugs, and any addiction is going to eat away at your faith and your relationship with God. It's impo- I don't know one person, Ruben, that's addicted to dope or alcohol who has a strong, sober, clear, loving relationship with God. It's impossible. I'll tell you why. Because, they're like you said, their mind is all over the place. Their intellect is not locked in on God. It's impossible. Their intellect is just scrambled. And their will, which is that part of the soul that, 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 that leads you to do what is good, their will is weak. Their will is injured. Their will is hampered uh, when they're under the influence of alcohol or drugs. But I'll tell you, um, you, you had mentioned about uh, the money connection. L- let me answer this question that are drugs good or bad? Because okay, that's a question that we get asked here uh, at, at the show. My response is that we live in a time of pharmaceuticals, recreational drugs, and hardcore narcotics, as well as medical drugs. And many pharmaceuticals, of course, save lives. We don't deny that. And they, of- they often appear near magical in what they can do. There seems to be a drug for everything, even problems that one would not think are connected to chemicals. In the U.S. alone, more than $250 billion is spent on pharmaceuticals each year, and our reliance on them is fantastic. The Mayo Clinic reports that 70% of Americans are on at least one prescription drug. Antidepressants are rampant. 11% of Americans are on these. Advertisement on television give us a clear idea of both the commercial aspects and the many side effects. And there, there is good and there is bad. And there's overuse, just like anything else. Some of it may be from God, while other aspects of it may be from darkness. It's a bit mysterious how drugs, particularly those that affect the mind, have long been associated with sorcery back in the Old and in the New Testament. We got Paul Clay. He's on the air. Paul, you got a comment? Go ahead, my friend. Yeah, I just want to tell you guys, great show, Jess and Ruben. Um, the, um, the thing that comes to my mind is, you know, in, in, in Colossians, uh, the Bible says, whatsoever you do, do as unto the Lord. And I want to ask all those people out there that uh, think it's okay, you know, to smoke marijuana, can you actually pray that prayer and say, Lord, let me do this unto you? And I don't think that you can. And, uh, Jess, and you touched on it just a minute ago, you know, you reminded us that, hey, we're in a battle. This is... This is spiritual warfare that we're involved in every single day. Now imagine being in an earthy battle or out there on patrol in the jungle at night and having your partner be out of his mind, 
you know, uh, at, you know, under the influence of marijuana. I don't know about you, but I would feel pretty shaky about that. Yeah. <laughs> Exactly. You know, any first responder, a cop, a paramedic, a fireman, they are useless to their to their employer, to the community, or to their partner if they're intoxicated. They're absolutely useless. Yeah. Same thing with somebody in the trenches in a foxhole overseas fighting for this country. If a guy is over in uh, you know North Vietnam slamming heroin right next to you while you guys are getting shot at, this guy that's slamming heroin in a foxhole, he's useless to you. And that's what the devil's Absolutely. trying to do. He's trying to make people useless to evangelism, to the body of Christ, to 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 pursuing a life of holiness by keeping you intoxicated. And what that not think? only that is that that part, partner doesn't love you because if he's going to do that, he doesn't care about your safety. You have to have each other's back out there. You know that, Paul. When we worked, when, you know, back in back in the day in uh, in patrol, you you had like you, you mentioned, we we had to have people we could trust. You expected them to be. Uh, upright, you know, f- focused, and uh, you know, body, mind, s- spirit. You need you need everything. You need all your faculties. Absolutely. Paul, you got a comment? Yeah. Go ahead, Paul. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I couldn't agree with you guys more. And I just ask every listener out there: Can you imagine if, when you called nine one one, the officers that responded or the firemen that responded <laughs> were high on lead? Imagine that. Would you would you feel comfortable with that? Would you like that? And, and I guarantee you, everybody would say absolutely not, yep. because uh, they they want us as prepared as we can be, and the only way we can be as prepared as we can be is to be sober minded. How about if your surgeon you went okay. in for surgery and your surgeon had just smoked a bong? You know, <laughs> he just hit a couple absolutely. hits on the bong, man. Oh boy! <laughs> Great comments, Paul. Yeah. Yes, thanks a lot, thanks, partner. Uh, keep good work. All right. Yep. Thanks, Paul. Good stuff. L- retired Lieutenant Paul Clay. That's right. You know, yep. G- uh, Jesus said that in First Timothy two four, um, who desires all he he desires that all men to be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. You can't come to the knowledge of the truth when you're you're so, when you're not sober, when you're you're high, your mind's not thinking clearly. Okay, another another uh, segment is up. Remember, if you stay ready, you don't have to get ready. We're going to be, uh, we want to continue where we left off, Jess, a little bit yeah, longer? Yeah, we could, yeah, we'll okay. do one more segment. Yeah, okay. one more. Yeah. All right. That's, uh, we'll be right back. Topic. Ernesto from Long Beach. You know, I just wanted to comment, you know, and I just wanted to thank you guys. And I kind of wanted to encourage people that are listening, maybe that are not donating, you know, because honestly, I got to be honest, I used to think you guys were a little too over the top, time, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah. You That's know, right. If God gave us a lot, you know, and I'm, I have the blessing of listening to all this, and I just want to call all the people, you know, I got five kids, you know, and I don't make a lot of money, and I'm still donating to you guys. God because bless you, I, brother. You're amazing. We gotta. We have to do this. We have to do the extra. And it's not even the extra. People see it like it's extra. Kneeling for communion, saying your rosary, saying the Divine Mercy Chaplet. It is not extra. It's what the church tells us to do. Amen. You're a good man, brother. 30 years old, 30 years old 29 years old, five kids, and I thank you guys for everything. Everybody else, man, get on fire. Fight for the truth, man. I know what I'm telling you guys. There's I no love it. Out there. This is Terry Barber reminding you there's a women's conference coming up September 7th, 2019 at the Sacred Heart Chapel. Mary Danielle Barber will be speaking along with Barbara Nicolosi. They're going to be talking about true femininity. Be who you are. This is going to be for your daughters, your mothers. Every woman should be at this conference. And the way to do it is go to virginmostpowerfulradio.org or call 877-526-2151.
buying or selling your home or your business property? This is Terry Barber. Real Estate for Life underwrites The Terry and Jesse Show. And they can connect you to one of 900 pro-life real estate agents around the world. And when they receive their referral fee, they will give 80% of it to a pro-life organization. Wow, that's 80%. Realestateforlife.org, 877-LIFE-US-1. Now, back to Jesus 911. If this call is not an emergency, dial 888-526-2151. Jesus 911. No cross, no crown, no pain, no gain, and no guts, no glory. We're talking about marijuana, and um, Jesse wrote a book on marijuana. It's called What is Wrong with Marijuana? 50 Questions and Answers, and uh, yours truly endorsed the back of it. So right. uh, I really believed in it. Just, well, I still do. When, when you wrote it, it was um, hard-hitting. At the time, we were, we were going through this battle to legalize marijuana here. Unfortunately, it passed, and... Um, it's a shame. We're yeah. going to suffer the consequences, Ruben, and our children are if we don't turn this ship around. Oh, yeah. I just want to mention real quick before we continue, today's the feast day of the queenship of the Blessed Virgin Mary. Today, that's oh, what we celebrate yeah. at Holy Mass. And so I would just like to pray a Hail Holy Queen for all of our listeners and your intentions. That's right. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost, amen. Hail Holy Queen, Mother of Mercy, our life, our sweetness, and our hope. To thee do we cry oh, for banished children of Eve. To thee do we send up our sides, mourning and weeping in this valley of tears. Turn then, then most gracious advocate, thine eyes of mercy towards us. And after this, our exile, show unto us the blessed fruit of thy womb, Jesus. O clement, O loving, O sweet Virgin Mary, pray for us, O most holy Mother of God, that we may be made worthy of the promises of Christ. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost, amen. All right. Here's another question. Here's a common one, Reuben, that kids, smart aleck kids, ask mom and dad. Mom, dad. God made all plants good. He said it is good when he made everything in the book of Genesis, including the green plants. Well, marijuana is, is the plant and, that God made, so it's got to be good. Right, Mom and Dad? Here's the way you should respond, okay? Plants are not all equal or healthy. For example, hemlock is the plant. God made hemlock, but it will kill you. Just ask Socrates. Poison ivy's good. God made it, but I would not use it for camouflage or body oil or as an herb. What about nightshade? Nightshade's a plant. Nightshade is good, made by God. However, nightshade is poisonous. You think it'd be okay to put some nightshade in a children's vitamin supplement? No, I don't think so. What about the poppy? That's a good flower. The morphine that we extract, it's used, used appropriately. That's good. However, morphine used addictively is bad. So don't follow the false mantra of the Woodstock 60s. They say, don't panic. It's organic. That's a half-truth. Some plants are not good or healthy, as I've just demonstrated. Yeah, it's true that God made marijuana and the plants in general so that we could appreciate their aesthetic beauty and the wonders of, of nature. God didn't make marijuana with the specific intent of using it to numb our senses and shrink our brains. Yeah, by the way, marijuana does shrink the brain. That's been medically studied and verified. Pot has mind-altering properties. <clears throat> it's classified as a drug. Mm -hmm. So when one uses marijuana for the specific purpose of getting high, this is a sin denounced by the Catechism of the Church and the Holy Bible. And in fact, there's an apocryphal book for the Jews, but they do quote it every now and then for their theology. The Jews, it's a, it's a book called the Book of Enoch, which also describes how fallen angels taught humans how to utilize plants and to cut roots to tap into the psychedelic compounds and to elicit these metaphysical experiences and cast spells. Ruben? That's a good answer, Jess. Um, uh, it, what about this one? If the government says it's legal, is it okay? It's, it's okay, isn't it? We'll tackle that one. Yeah, legal. Oh, what would you tell mom and dad? I said legal does not mean moral. It, it was also legal to own slaves. It's legal to kill a, a, mother's, a baby in a mother's womb. It's legal to have a doctor kill you in euthanasia. It's in some states. Um, it's legal for two men to get married. It's legal to produce pornography. These are things that are legal unto man, but an abomination unto God. Legalizing marijuana will not change the fact that it is not good for you and can cause spiritual, emotional, even physical problems. And don't forget, some laws 
um, are bad, like the examples that I just provided. However, laws that prevent bad things are good laws. There are two ways to be fooled. One is to believe that what isn't true, the other is to refuse to believe what is true. Uh, the Bible weighs in on this question. First Corinthians 6.12 says, All things are lawful for, for me, but not all things are helpful. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be enslaved by anything. That, that's, a, that's a good one. Mind-altering drugs are addictive and enslave you to sin. 1 Corinthians 10, 23 says, All things are lawful, but not all things are helpful. All things are lawful, but not all things build up. So though smoking may be lawful, will it help you become holier? Will it make That's you question then. your prayer life better? Will it draw you closer to God? Of course it won't, you know. And and uh, finally, 1 Corinthians 8, 9 says, Only take care lest this liberty of yours somehow become a stumbling block to the weak. So if you're an ad, uh, an adult, does smoking dope around your spouse and kids provide a bad example? Of course it does. It makes you look like a, a hedonist that needs to live with an altered mind, has no self-discipline, and no desire to master your disordered passions or do penance and practice mortification. There's no way you can do that. And, you know, as Christians, we're called, we are from God. As Scripture says, First uh, John 4, 6 says, We are from God, and whoever knows God listens to us, but whoever is not from God does not listen to us. This is how we recognize the spirit of truth and the spirit of falsehood. You can't you can't recognize that spirit because you're not if you're not in a right relationship with God, you're not going to hear that the voice. That's right. Anyway, you're Even, up. I found a study that says uh, this is probably not going to surprise you uh, because you're probably wondering, well, who has more propensity to smoke marijuana and use other legal drugs? I found a study that says liberals are five oh. times more likely than conservatives to use marijuana and cocaine. Absolutely. Does that surprise you? No, no. not at all. Because generally, liberals are godless. They're pagans, they're atheists, they're, they're agnostics. Generally, conservatives are church-going people, so there's at least an attempt to start forming the mind based on the Word of God. And, and uh, he, here's another, another question I want to answer. Is marijuana addictive? Well, marijuana is the number one addiction of 65% of teenagers that are in drug rehab. Marijuana is the gateway drug to cocaine and methamphetamine. Marijuana harms the lungs faster than smoking cigarettes. So what's good about legalizing marijuana? Nothing. Legalization of marijuana means it could be sold in grocery stores. There will be skyrocketing usage of marijuana amongst teens and young people. We're going to see an increase in of drug driving on streets and freeways. People will have the right to get high on the job. Watch. There's also going to be higher insurance premiums as addictions soar. And marijuana operatives will buy thousands of acres of farmland. So here's some straight talk. Marijuana legalization means messed up minds, messed up lives, messed up family, and even a worse society. Is this the kind of culture you want? Don't buy the lie. Contrary to po common belief, marijuana can be addictive. Research suggests that 30% of users may develop some degree of problem use which can lead to dependence and in severe cases takes the form of addiction. Mm, Ruben? Good. Um, I'll do this question. What about medical marijuana as a true painkiller? And uh, to quote Dr. Taylor Marshall, who, by the way, you may be on his show. Uh, La I think later on, on today. Later on today. Okay. Yeah. Dr. Taylor Marshall, uh, you know, um, he, a lot of you listen to him on, on YouTube and, and uh, on his podcast. So he says that, is marijuana sinful for Christians? That's, that's the question that it's asked. Um, if you're going to pull a bullet from my arm and we have no painkillers, I'm getting drunk, and that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> the same goes for the medicinal use of cocaine, opium, codeine, and marijuana. Of course, there must be a true medicinal cause. I don't think that having a headache or anxiety or depression is a just cause for smoking marijuana. I'll leave the details to the medical experts. And uh, medical marijuana would fall under the precept of Proverbs 31, 6. Give beer to those who are perishing, wine to those who are in anguish. There are times when alcohol or other drugs are allowed for greater good. However, I don't think it's that Snoop Dogg's prescription for smoking weed every day while sipping on gin and juice <laughs> meet the meta medicinal criteria. So any substance that inhibits rational functionality should not be indulged. Absolutely not. <clears throat> Ruben, and I'll tell you, just Dr. Vince Fortunace, the brain surgeon, I asked him about um, marijuana, 
specifically about the CBD, and, and he told me this. He says he's a world-renowned brain surgeon. He said this, Jess, people tout that the CBD has medicinal value. He says, however, after you're no longer under the influence and you're sober, your sensitivity to pain increases. He says you can extract the CBD, but it's very expensive, and we have drugs much less expensive that helps decrease your pain. I've read from other doctors that say there's no medicinal value. What it does, it just calms the pain. That's what it does. Here's another one, Ruben, that uh, pertains to you and I and, and Paul and some other people that worked in law enforcement. What, so what's the percentage of inmates who committed crimes under the influence? Okay? I discovered this in a study which says 85% of inmates who are locked up in jail committed their crimes under the influence of drugs or alcohol or both. And once they're sober, many of them wish they did not commit the crime. And they all say that if they were sober, they would not have done what they did. Well, what's what's the point here? Drugs deaden your senses and your moral conscience. Therefore, under the influence of drugs or alcohol or both, you will do things and take risks that you would not normally take. How can you remember the Ten Commandments, which is the eternal moral law, if, if, and have a clear understanding of right and wrong if you're under the influence. It's impossible. Marijuana use makes you a fuzzy-thinking moral relativist. That's right. You, you know what, what they look like is after Trump, Trump won the election, do you see how, how all those liberals were just freaking out, crying and <laughs> spastic? Because that's, that, that's how they look like when they're on dope. Uh <laughs> Here's a here's a question. Um, can you give me a common sense reason why I should not smoke marijuana and use illegal drugs? It's uh, pretty simple. The God, the body is God's perfect creation. Being well and sober is not a disease. Drugs are supposed to be taken as prescribed by a doctor when the body is sick and not functioning well. And um, I and Jesse probably the same thing. I only take drugs that are prescribed by a doctor who has studied medicine for about ten years and is certified and accredited by the state board of physicians. So we are not going to take drugs from Larry the Loser, Danny the Doper, Willie the Weed Fiend, Manuel the Marijuano, or Tommy the Toker, who is a high school dropout and as intelligent as a box of rocks. Drug abuse is a, cr- is a crutch for the weak and, and a cop-out for cowards. That's right. And then not only marijuana, but we, we got to refrain from other drugs that uh, are not necessary. You know. Amen. Amen. Jesus 911. We're going to talk about a hero, Ruben, in the next segment. All right, let's do it. Catholic hero. This is Mary Danielle Barber. And I would like to invite you to join us here at the Sacred Heart Chapel in downtown Covina for a true femininity, be who you are, women's conference, Saturday, September 7, 2019, from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Barbara Nicolosi and I will be speaking. It's $35 a person, and you can register at virginmostpowerfulradio.org or call 877 526 2151. We hope to see you at the Women's Conference, September 7, 2019. Jesus said to the apostles in Luke chapter 10, Whoever listens to you listens to me, and whoever rejects you rejects me. According to St. Boniface, in her voyage across the ocean of this world, the church is like a great ship being pounded by the waves of life's different stresses. Our duty is not to abandon ship, but to keep her on course. May our Lord help us remain ever faithful to his church to aid and defend her.
buying or selling your home or your business property? This is Terry Barber. Real Estate for Life underwrites the Terry and Jesse Show, and they can connect you to one of 900 pro-life real estate agents around the world. And when they receive their referral fee, they will give 80% of it to a pro-life organization. Wow, that's 80%. Realestateforlife.org, 877-LIFE-US-1. Now, back to Jesus 911. If this call is not an emergency, dial 888-526-2151. Two LASD deputy sheriffs retired. Leaving all sin destroyed is now what it means for us, Jess. Um, we can do that with the power of Jesus Christ, the grace from the sacraments, and uh, staying close to the... the uh, the sacraments close to the church, and here, so here we are, and we're talking about a kid that this guy well, knew. Man, one thing before we go to this kid here, just uh, yeah. somebody texted me, just uh, said, "Hey, just remind the audience that uh, marijuana has been linked to schizophrenia." In my book that I wrote, I have a bunch of medical doctors that say that marijuana is connected, uh, induces schizophrenia, and what's schizophrenia? It's a severe mental disorder with symptoms such as hallucinations paranoia and disorganized thinking i got about 10 doctors in my book that say marijuana causes schizophrenia also i got another text where somebody says hey uh can governments be possessed absolutely if uh if you if you I, I, the top exorcist in the world right now will tell you that demons there are particular demons that are assigned to go after governments for example communism was under the influence of the devil nazis under the influence of satan uh, there are so governments are subject to di- diabolical influence, and the fact is, anybody who's passing this from one state to another is uh, working for the devil, who's the prince of this world and the god of this world, and uh, and they're they're under a diabolical disorientation. And at this point, who's the one that's passing it? Well, let's just call it it's the Democrats. Yeah. All right, Ruben, we can move on. One last thing, Jess, the doctor you quoted earlier, Doctor Fortunacy, is that how yeah. you pronounce his name? Yeah. And speaking with him when he did a, we did the conference here, he uh, because my mom had uh, Alzheimer's, and we were talking about it, and he says that to do MRIs of the brain, long-term marijuana users, their brain looks similar to those with uh, dementia, okay. with the Alzheimer's. The the uh, hippocampus in the front here is it's shrunk down, it's smaller, and that's and you're gonna. He says that I guarantee you. Down the road, these long-term marijuana users are going to come down with dementia and Alzheimer's because of their use of drugs. Yeah. I mean, the rest of us are fighting it just by normal erosion of the body. Exactly. But people that are smoking dope are going to precipitate this. Yes. That's hey, it. we got a phone call, Ruben. We got somebody calling us up on line one. Okay. Caller, you're on. Go ahead. Okay. I don't think it's, uh, he's ready yet. Okay. Okay. All right. Who's the hero, Ruben? There's a hero. Uh, back in uh, in Colorado, you may have heard about the the school shooting, and uh, there was a young man who um, who stopped the uh, the shooting. His name was Kendrick Castillo, an 18 year old who died in May while helping disarm a school shooter in Highlands Ranch, Colorado. He was honored by the Knights of Columbus on Tuesday night at the Caritas Medal with the Caritas Medal. The Caritas is Latin for charity, and, and so. And as we go through life, just remember to be like Kendrick, be selfless. John Castillo, the father of Kendrick Castillo, said upon accepting the Caritas Medal on behalf of his son at the annual Knights of Columbus State Dinner on Tuesday. And he says, the dad says, I wish I could say I taught Kendrick those things, but a few things I did teach him. Castillo said about his son's reputation for service, but in all actuality, he was the angel who saved my life, who taught me how to live. I will never forget him. Go ahead, Jess. Kendra Castillo was an 18-year-old student at STEM High School in Highlands Ranch, Colorado. He was killed on May 7th while rushing a gunman who was attempting mass murder at the school. Kendrick was just a week away from graduation, his father said. He was the only person killed in the attack at the school. Eight others were injured. So here's what happened. As a student armed with with a rifle entered Kendrick's classroom, intending to execute students and teachers, Kendrick left from his seat, and pinned the gunman against the wall. Two other students rushed the gunman to disarm him, 
but not before Kendrick was fatally shot in the chest. The father said, uh, or the parents said, as we miss Kendrick here on earth, I know that he's with his true father in heaven. Castillo said in a moving testimony before cardinals, bishops, and priests, and knights from around the world, he was my best friend for 18 years and the love of his mother's life. Wow. And so, uh, yeah, Ruben, the, the Knights of Columbus have honored him with the Scaritas Medal, which is the second highest uh, award of the organization, and it's a medal with an image of God, of, of the Good Shepherd. But more than that, you know where he's going to be honored by? He's going to be honored right now in heaven, I believe, as, uh, it, because what he did was the greatest act of Christianity. John chapter 15, there is no greater love than this that a man should lay down his life for another. The fact that he was willing to lay down his life for his fellow classmates, it tells me that he died a martyr. He died because he, he, he wanted to stop evil and he wanted to continue uh, protecting the common good. So there was, there, was a, there was Christian virtue stamped into this young man's soul that impelled him to do what he did. That's right, Jess. He wanted to be a knight, and he was always accompanying his father at these um, at, at the nights uh, whenever they do um, uh, feed the homeless and, 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 and shelter the homeless and all those things. He was always there. He was an uh, you know, usher at Mass and... and he mentored friends and supported them through struggles with school and family life and, and assisted the elderly at Mass. This guy had it. He knew his purpose in life. And this guy was, uh, he was serving God and, uh, and serving his neighbor, loving God, loving his neighbor. Uh, this young man had his head on straight, Reuben. Yes, he did, Jess. And we should all, uh, you know, hope to that uh, if we're going to, if we're going to go out and we're going to die, we can go out, you know, like, like him. Obviously, he, this guy. With a purpose. Yeah, yeah, I, I could see. You know, maybe one day he might, you know, we might uh, be maybe looking at this guy. Maybe raised the altars. He might be a saint. Yes. Yeah. So, um. So this this kid it says uh, it is through people that that God speaks to us through their virtue. This is what uh, the Cardinal Thomas Collins said, um, and uh, that he says that's why the church takes time and effort and attention to hold up the example of saintly people, who show us the path. The call to God help us on this journey, he said. That was the, that was from the this keynote speaker, Cardinal Thomas Collins of Toronto, and he praised the sacrificial love of Kendrick. Hey, Jess. Well, I wanted to say a prayer for him, Reuben, in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. Eternal rest grant unto Kendrick Castillo, Lord, and let your perpetual light shine upon him. May the soul of Kendrick Castillo, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Amen. Amen. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. Jess, I just got a note here that one of our faithful YouTube supporters, uh, faithful listeners to the program. Uh, he's always on the chat line with us this in the morning. Um, Ricky, his father, has uh, passed away suddenly, so let's let's pray for Ricky and all our viewers and all, all our listeners if they could join in in praying for uh, for this. Uh, it's not easy, especially when it's it's suddenly. So let's uh, let's let's uh, let's pray. Uh, um, a Hill Mary, our Father Hill Mary, and a Potter. Uh, I mean, uh, and the Gloria. Uh, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with, Lord thee. with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for, pray us, for us now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Gloria Patria, Filii, et Spiritui Santo, sicut erit in principio, et nunc in semper, et in secula seculorum. Amen. Amen. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. All right. So, Ruben, what can we do with the church? Uh, what can we do about the church homosexual crisis? Rather than avoiding the issues and conflicts or just despairing and giving up on God, we need to look at these times through a better lens than annoyance and inconvenience. First of all, the situation is real. It's not a concocted emergency to draw attention or mount a campaign. It's real and really important. The entire world of Catholicism and all Christianity eventually is involved. So it's, it's an existentially perilous time for the church. Second, we need to accept the things we need to accept the things we can do in this crisis. We can't go to Rome and straighten out the Vatican. Okay? We can't go to the USCCB and straighten them out. But there's still an enormous amount of things we can do in our own lives, in our own environment. We can inventory our own lives and identify what we are working with. Do we have godly influence over our families? 
We should gently and constantly teach and evangelize our family members. We should assume the family is the sole teacher of the faith. At best, outside catechesis confirms what the family teaches. We cannot assume others will catechize our children or our grandchildren. This presupposes that we brush up on our knowledge of the Catholic faith, Scripture, Christ, the sacraments, the catechism, because our family is our greatest responsibility. Close to your family is your local priest and pastor. You may not ever get a chance to speak to the bishop, but everybody can encourage and impact the local priest. Even a lost priest, a confused priest, or an unbelieving priest can be greatly influenced by caring and honest parishioners. You don't need to feel that you should teach him. Share your lives in your, uh, sharing your lives and your prayers with him will, will teach him a lot. You don't have to buy into their unbelief or theological distortions either. The late testimony of fidelity and the lordship of Jesus Christ has rescued the souls of many priests. Make him your friend and then share your friendship with God with him. And beyond that, many doors can be opened for us to be witnesses for our faith, from family to friends to neighbor and town. Helping others is a gentle and friendly thing which help others without overwhelming them. Pray for others and let God be the healer of their souls. The ones you can help further will pop up again later and be at peace, but be aware. We can, through grace and the Holy Spirit, be in great peace and joy even when the world is in turmoil. Just remember that all the enemies of God are unable to threaten Him. God created all and by His will holds, uh, holds us in being. He's the Lord and King, and as Psalm 2 says about God, why are the nations in an uproar and the peoples devising a vain thing? The kings of the earth will take their stand and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed. Let us tear their feathers apart and cast away their cords from us. He, God, who sits in the heaven, laughs. Did you catch that? God is laughing at evil men right now because God reigns so you can be at peace just as we would be, uh, you know, just if we would be of all we're going very well. That doesn't mean that things don't bother us and the future is of no concern. It means that we belong to God and we can trust Him through anything, even through this church crisis. So pray, 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 and remember the history of the Catholic faith that demonstrates that people can be instrumental in global events by prayer. Think of Elijah and Daniel. Think of St. Anthony of the desert who kept receding into the desert for hermetic prayer but influenced the Pope and was a protector and a retreat for St. Athanasius. Think about St. Catherine of Siena, who encouraged and challenged and taught the Pope. Unless we, can, unless we pray, we can do nothing. Pray the rosary. Go to adoration. Pray the St. Michael the Archangel prayer every day. Pray to the Jesus prayer every day. Pray contemplative prayer. Amen. And, and pray. Reuben? Absolutely, Jess. Do not stop. Do not, uh, do not worry. Put your trust in Jesus. Like it says uh, in the chapel of the Divine Mercy, Jesus, I trust in you. So... That is the best thing remedy you can do, and uh, like you like you said about the priests, we we've got to befriend them, you know, let them know that we we we're with them, with and let them know you're praying for them. All right, like they say in Curcio, make a friend, be a friend, and then bring that friend to Bing, Christ. Bingo. All right. Stay tuned for Hands On Apologetics with Gary Mashuda. You are, uh, we are ten seven. We are going off shift, off duty. So. Uh, Gary's going to take over from, from here on out. God bless you. Keep the peace. St. Faustina's Prayer for Priests O oh my Jesus, I beg thee on behalf of the whole church, grant it love and the light of thy spirit, and give power to the words of priests, so that hardened hearts might be brought to repentance and return to thee, O Lord. Lord, give us holy priests. Thou thyself maintain them in holiness. O divine and great high priest, may the power of thy mercy accompany them everywhere and protect them from the devil's traps and snares, which are continually being set for the souls of priests. May the power of thy mercy, O Lord, shatter and bring to naught all that might tarnish the sanctity of priests. For thou canst do all things. Amen. Virgin most powerful, pray for us. <laughs>